Let's talk about elemental damage and coming from abilities from the descendants in the first descendants and how this all works. But before we do this, two things I have to announce. First things first, if you haven't watched my first video yet about the weapon elemental damage, please do so. I will cross reference a lot of findings from there and I'm laying out the groundwork for this video. So please watch it. There is a link down below in the video description. Second, this took me longer than expected because it is a completely different system. I first thought I can just translate the weapon elemental damage findings into this video and I only have to make a few changes here and there. The reality is it's completely different. It's a different calculation system. The dots are working different. The descendants are working different, even though they're in the same elemental category. It's insane that they have a completely different system for weapons and for descendants. So this is why it took me so long. I also needed the help of my community to give me some of the descendants I haven't unlocked yet so I can actually test my findings, right? And this is why it took me over two weeks to get to this point. With that said, let's jump into the video. So the first two things you have to know is you are getting your ability and your elemental damage from your descendant modules and from your core, but you probably already know that. And if you want to know exactly what you are getting yourself into, you can just go in the Descendant overview here and then you can take a look at the abilities and the game is telling you exactly how it works, how the calculation through the core and the mods is actually working and you get a pretty good overview what the hell you are dealing with. This is completely different from the weapon elemental damage stuff, right? Because they didn't give you any explanation whatsoever. So this is really helpful. With that said, they are still missing out some crucial information. So always look at the skill calculation and how much it does, right? And then you get a pretty pretty good overview on what the hell is going on here. Now, what we have to talk about is the difference in descendants. So even if you have descendants who are in the same category, sometimes their dots were completely different. Let me give you an example here, Blair. Blair has the burn dot, which stays for five seconds. But then when you are going to good old Lepic here, he also has a fire dot, but that fire dot only stays for three seconds. Why is there a difference? I do not know. And to make it even crazier, we have then, of course, good old Asimo here, who is also fire descendant, but has no fire dot. He is not creating any burn damage. Again, I have no clue why that is, but they decided to do that. Um, there's also sometimes differences inside a descendant itself, like Bunny. Her Q and her V ability will cause electrocution, but her super electric laser beam does not. No clue why. It's just how it works. But that's like some of the weird stuff I found and which made the whole testing also a little bit more interesting or a little bit more complicated. But with that said, let's talk about how the elemental dots work. And first things first, we start with burn. Burn is the fire damage and it now ticks every second instead of every 0.5 seconds like it does with the weapons. And this is true for every elemental dot coming from abilities. It is always every second. Also, you have a 100% chance to trigger a dot. So with weapons, you have only a percentage chance, right? Which is lower the faster you shoot and higher the slower you shoot. For abilities, it is always 100%. So that is true for all the dots. With that said, let's talk about burn. Burn stays for five or three seconds, depending on if you're playing Blair or Lepic. It does not stack. It does not refresh. It takes every second. But, and that is important, as long as the enemy is still staying in the effect, there will be a new dot applied when the old dot runs out. And yes, that is important because not everyone does that. Now, Let's talk about electrocution. So Sharon and Bunny can cause electrocution and it stays for three seconds. It does not stack, but it now refreshes. And that's not 
too important for Ban uh, for Sharon because she doesn't really have like a lot of abilities she can trigger over and over. But Bunny can, especially with a V ability, and you have to be careful about this because she can apply the dot faster than it ticks. So let me give you an example. You are doing damage to an enemy, right? That immediately applies the dot, but now you have to wait a second before the first dot triggers and Bunny can apply the electrocution faster than the dot ticks. So you would just refresh the dot over and over before it does even any damage. Now, of course, you can argue, is it really too important, right? Because the dot damage is not as high as the damage Bunny does. So you are not necessarily missing out on too much, but again, if you can combine that in a meaningful way, it definitely helps your DPS instead of hinder you. And that's something you should think about. But I would definitely go so far to say that the pure damage is always more important than the dot damage from electrocution when it comes to Bunny. Now let's talk about chill. Doesn't exist. There is no chill debuff. Like normally with weapon damage, right, it stuns the enemy for 0.5 seconds. Now, that doesn't really happen here because, again, the chill debuff slash stun doesn't exist. And Visa is the only chill character right now, and she has her ice shackles, which kind of do a similar thing, right? So we will have to see what happens when we get another chill descendant. Now, let's talk about Toxic. Remember how I said that Toxic could be one of the most OP dots when it comes to weapons? Yeah, that's not the same thing with abilities because they it works completely different. First, it stays for 10 seconds. It does not refresh. It does not stack anymore. And Frainer which was the character I tested the most because, well, she is the only toxic character right now. Um, I think she's busted. There are some issues with her abilities, like her putrid venom, which is the puddle you can put on the ground, which I'm doing here, stays normally for um, 12 seconds, right? And the dot runs for 10 seconds. So when the enemies are still standing in the puddle, even when the dot runs out, they do not get a new dot. Which is like, wait, what? But that's how it works with Blair. That's odd, right? And she has some other issues with how her toxin works. So she's, she's definitely a problem. And I don't know if this is an issue with toxic, if it is a bug. Um... But right now, that's how it works. So again, 10 seconds, no stack, no refresh, and doesn't apply again, at least not with the putrid venom. Now, let's talk about calculation. So we've already established that you have 100% hit chance, right, with an ability, and this will always create a dot. How is it with crits? Because when we talked about weapon elemental damage, we established that when the bullet crits and that triggers a dot, the dot will always crit for the whole duration. Well, with abilities, it doesn't work that way. It actually works how you would kind of guess it should work. So it checks every tick if you would crit or not. So every tick with the dot it would check your um, ele your elemental crit damage, right? And then if you crit, you get a crit. If you don't crit, well, you don't get a crit. Like how it should work. And which is also very important to note, things which increase your ability power, which increase your damage, do not apply to abilities which were already triggered. Like let's say Blair's Fire Puddle. If you're putting down Blair's Fire Paddle and then you get a way of enhancing your power, you have to put down another Fire Paddle so that it actually counts there. The same goes with um, the Paddle from the Toxic, right? Like if you have like the passive up and running for Freynar, 
you want to make sure basically that you have a very high passive stack before you trigger the next ability because that's where all that extra power will go into but the abilities which are already active in the game do not refresh with the new extra power you just got so that's also something very important to keep in mind but that's basically it and i will say this system i wouldn't be surprised if i have to make a video very soon like i am pretty sure that in about a year one of those two systems will not exist anymore it is bizarre to me that they decided to go with two different systems where which are so so different as they are and again i'm pretty sure we will see some major changes to the abilities to the elemental dot and how it works for the weapons or for the descendant because it is really different and sometimes confusing to keep track but i hope it will help helpful if it was please let me know down below in the comments and also if you still have some questions uh, you can ask me there try to answer as quickly as possible if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to leave a like and also if you're new to the channel you want to see more the first descendant videos or well we are also focusing on other rpgs here and survival games so it's not just the first descendant uh, you might want to subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching stay safe and i'll see you next time Bye bye